You know that moment when you try something for the first time and you know you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life because it's just so incredibly amazing? Well, that was me when I discovered paragliding. I'm Colin. I grew up in Berwick near the Scottish borders. As a boy, I loved the freedom of the outdoors. And after finishing high school, I joined the army and I served for nine years, including a tour to Iraq. My time in the military took me all over the world to some of the most remote and hostile countries. When we weren't on duty, we would take off into the mountains, climbing, skiing, and mountaineering, whatever we could get organized. We did this, I guess, as a way of escaping reality and the horrors of conflict. Looking back, we were in some of the most risky places on earth, and we still needed more. The army taught me to be comfortable with a greater level of risk than most people, and most importantly, to keep cool and not lose my shit when things weren't going to plan. Eventually, my love for the mountains took me to the Swiss Alps, and this is where I saw paragliding for the first time. Two days later, I was taking my first tandem flight. And from that moment on, I was hooked. After I left the army, I ended up getting a job on an oil rig. See ya! Two weeks on, two weeks off, which meant I could keep up having this adventurous lifestyle. The next thing I know, I'm on an oil rig in the middle of Bass Strait, doing high-risk rope access work. On oh, one of my two weeks off, I discovered Bright. And so, I set up base here. Bright had everything I could ever want. Climbing, biking, skiing, and this amazing paragliding hill. It was just the perfect place for me to live. I soon met Wally, a local paragliding instructor, and he started teaching me how to fly properly. Colin was great on the flight. Uh, he, he had a camera around his neck all the time and, and he's definitely going to be uh, into adventure filmmaking. He definitely threaded the needle though of, of safe and not safe for a while there. He knew my background, so he tried to keep me grounded and give me a solid foundation to build on. I'd had several close calls, including rolling my car, and I think I was beginning to be thought of as a little bit reckless. Reckless? The guy was a bloody idiot. We really didn't expect him to survive more than six months. It doesn't always go to plan, and there's a saying, there's old pilots and there are bold pilots, but there's no old bold pilots. Well, I'd like to be an old pilot one day. Here we are on Tonga launch, as you can see, slightly over the back, and uh, we both just <laughs> tried to give it a launch. <sighs> yeah, I'm okay. There's a lesson, don't try that at home. <laughs> Paragliders are lightweight and can be taken on your back practically anywhere. Combine them with camping and mountaineering, or what's also known as hike and fly, means they're perfect for exploration. Wanker. And that's exactly what I wanted from this sport. Once you're comfortable with taking off and landing, paragliding, well, it goes to the next level. Your main aim now is to catch a thermal, a rising column of hot air which can take you all the way up to the clouds. It sounds easy, doesn't it? The only problem is that these thermals are invisible, so it's now a race to find one before you hit the ground. As soon as I worked out how to do this, I was trying to fly further afield. Each flight is special because you never know how high or how far you're going to get from the launch. This one day, I was joined by a wedge-tailed eagle. I think he came to give me a flying lesson. Eventually, I managed to fly over 30 k's to Mount Bogong, the biggest mountain in Victoria. And this is when I thought to myself, I was finally ready for a real hike and fly adventure in some big mountains. So I headed to New Zealand with my crazy Italian roommate, Fritz. In my mind, I could picture myself and Fritz walking into this amazing New Zealand scene with this epic cinematic track playing in the background. We're hiking up to launch and we take off and we're gracefully picked up by a thermal. Going. We climb higher and higher until we reach cloud base. And 
then we take off for a cross-country adventure. Hopefully we're gonna have another uh, two or three hours flying. This is everything I thought paragliding would be. Well, it kind of went like that. Not many people get to adventure the wilderness in this way and my time in New Zealand reinforced just how much I love paragliding. <laughs> what a day! We did have some moments, but they weren't all bad. I left New Zealand with still a lot to learn, but with the dream of flying now in even bigger mountains. Amaze balls! Things can happen to your wing in flight, especially if the air is turbulent. I mean, essentially we're flying a plastic bag with strings attached, swinging beneath it, and it's in no way rigid. A wing collapsing can cause all sorts of problems, and the chances of this happening are magnified in the mountains where everything is bigger. The thermals are bigger, the weather is more unpredictable, the turbulence stronger, and the consequences are way more severe. Learning to control the wing if it collapses is the foundation of an SIV course and after New Zealand I realised I had to do one. Back at work I had time to research my next adventure. My mate Rob had told me of a mountainous valley that ran the entire length of Tajikistan. This was the next big mountain trip I was looking for. But first I thought I'd better book an SIV course in Turkey. Ok launching! So basically, they get you to take off from this 2,000 meter high launch site above the ocean. You then fly straight ahead until you're out over the sea. It takes about five minutes, but it feels like forever. And there's plenty of time to think about what you're just about to do. So, you have the height, I'd like you to sit up. Then, over the radio. and recover in your own time. They instruct you to collapse your wing, and it's pretty nerve-wracking. That's fine, hands up. Okay, now deal with the tip. Beautifully done. Yeah! An SIV course teaches you how to deal with shit when it goes bad. It stands for Simulated Incidents in Flight and it's an opportunity to practice in a controlled and relatively safe environment the techniques used to recover your wing should it collapse in flight. It helps to give pilots the confidence and the tools to react correctly in a dangerous situation. Tools that will be invaluable for what's coming next. All right, so we've survived the SIV course, but uh, where are we going to land? <laughs> Our main goal of Tajikistan was for Rob and myself to have a hike and fly adventure across a country that very few people ever visited, never mind flown across. We had a two week window to attempt to fly 400 k's across the Zarafshan ranges from Aini to the Pamirs. We then had to get back to Dushanbe, the capital of Tajikistan and catch our flights back to Australia. We knew we were going to be time poor, so we headed straight for the mountains. A two hour taxi ride took us as far as possible. And now it was up to us. So yeah, it's nice now to be moving away. And starting to get the adventure underway properly. Getting up into the mountains and finding a launch site was going to be way more challenging than we had expected. Good, dude. Uh, 
pretty zonked. So we just climbed our first little hill and we haven't had much sleep in the last four days. Oh man, that was steep. We had been going for 48 hours straight since we left Australia. It was hot and windy and we were buggered. So we decided to head up to the top of a hill and see if we could get in the air. So here we are waiting to launch. And just before sunset, the wind settled down and we were taking off. Yeah, you look good, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Right behind you, right behind you. It was only a short flight down to the village below, but we were glad to get our first flight into Tajikistan. and the welcome from the local kids, it was just amazing. <laughs> Slept well last night, real good campsite, and uh, today it's gonna be another hot, beautiful day. We only had a few backup days, so if we couldn't fly, we knew we were going to have to walk. Coming up to nearly 40 degrees in the sun. It's only 10 o'clock, so we've still got the midday sun to come and get even hotter. We've decided to hide out of the wind and out of the sun for a bit. Rob's been texting Tash all day long. Never puts the phone down. This definitely wasn't how things were supposed to go. We were supposed to be flying across this country, weightless and enjoying the views. But we'd only traveled a few Ks and were already behind our schedule. This was only gonna put more pressure on us as the trip went on. As we walk up, our pace is so slow, but I'm dying. I think Rob's dying. Oh, Fuck. Oh man, that was so hot. So we're gonna stay here? Uh, we've climbed up to just under 2,900 meters and we're just hoping that the clouds keep building. They're starting to build up behind us there, which is a good sign. The sun's been on those faces a little bit longer. <clears throat> Hopefully they'll continue to build and then um, we'll be able to launch from here. Yeah, nice. In Tajikistan, the landscape is raw and the mountains are big, really big. Get over 5,000 meters. A picturesque and mountainous landscape, second in height only to the Himalayas. Its jagged peaks extending to over 7,000 meters and a rich cultural heritage dating back over 2,000 years, back to the time of Alexander the Great. The isolation and danger were very real. We were entering into something bigger than we had ever flown before. And there was no turning back. What a great flight. <laughs> I've came and landed on the side here. Rob's landed just up there. A little bit nerve wracking. Took a little while to, to get into it but awesome really really good this really kick-started our flying for the rest of the trip when you're in the air it may look calm and peaceful from the ground but that's anything but the case you're constantly looking and feeling for the next thermal and listening to your variometer it can be quite turbulent and windy up there. As soon as you start hearing the beeping, you know you're getting close. 
You wait a moment, and then start turning. You're in the thermal. The quicker the beeping, the faster the air is moving upwards, and that's where you want to be. You'll take this elevator all the way to the top. I really couldn't believe where I was. I mean, I'd only been paragliding for a year now, and I was flying at five and a half thousand meters above the Zarafshan Mountains. Rob and I were having a proper adventure, right on the edge of our skill level and fitness. Fucking speed bar! My speed bar's detached, I can't get it on! What a truly amazing flight. Flew over all these ranges behind us, and we're in spitting distance of the Pamirs now. Rice, peas, shiitake mushrooms, and a nori, and a packet of soup. I just uh, had a full-on crash. Uh, I think it was because of one of these dust devils. Just as I crossed over the ridge, uh, my wing just got folded up into just a big crumpled up bag. How was that? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Hello. Just landed in super strong winds. Just almost going backwards on full speed bar. It's pretty scary. Oh. Come on, mate. It's shaken, but not stirred. Tajikistan, to some, sounds scary and hostile. But the people were extremely friendly and they were so enthusiastic to learn of our adventure. Thank you. <laughs> this, this is wonderful. Despite the language barrier, they were always so keen to welcome us into their homes. We've been welcomed in again to another another home. They would feed us chai, yogurt, potatoes, give us a bed for the night, and help us anytime we found ourselves in need. One time they even loaned us a vehicle for the day. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to go up there, and then we're going to try and fly down. If we ever found ourselves lost, they would happily show us the way. We were still nearly 50 k's away from the nearest road, and time was running out. The weather window for us was closing. Okay, bye bye. Strong winds were predicted, which would limit our ability to fly. Just landed, which is probably the last little flight of our old bivy part of our trip. Now we're going to try and make our way back to, to Shambe. So we've been walking now for almost 14 k's. When you're flying, physically it's pretty easy. The wing takes all the weight. But when you find yourself on the ground, carrying everything, crossing rivers, Climbing steep valley walls, suddenly it's really tough. 
And we were worried about a bridge. Tajikistan, at times, is a huge snow bridge. It was brutal. So what if it collapsed? There's very few roads, hardly any bridges, and definitely no BP truck stops along the way. We were exhausted, but we couldn't stop. Once we've made that climb, we're home free. Time was running out for us to get back, and we still had a huge distance to cover and a snow-covered pass to cross. Pretty perilous. Both of us were almost at breaking point. Holy shit. <sighs> Climbing up that final pass was our toughest moment. We couldn't walk another step. <laughs> we're both from here on in, it was all downhill, and by this time tomorrow, we will be back in Dushanbe. Let me show you the view. Oh, man. Ah. To have come this far together was truly amazing. The joys of walking, eh? <laughs> Fortunately, no more. Go down a bit. Just time to hit the spa. <laughs> <laughs> Day spa, massage, sauna, banquet. <laughs> better than what Rob made for us last night. <laughs> Slightly worn out after what? Three days? Hard going. Bye bye. You like? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been flying for a year, and from that first tandem flight, I would have never imagined just how far paragliding would end up taking me. All he needs to do is get some experience, get some time in the air. Looking back now at some of my early photos, I guess I was always destined to be a flyboy. <laughs>